Hello everyone. Shortly after his baptism in the river Jordan and following his temptation in the wilderness in the province of Judea, Jesus began his public ministry in the region of Galilee. He did so by proclaiming the coming of God's kingdom and by demonstrating his power over the destructive forces of nature, demons, illnesses, death and sin. For centuries, the people of Israel had been crying out to God and expecting a Messiah, as foretold by their prophets, to come and deliver them from their oppression and suffering. At last, all of the hopes and aspirations of the people and God's promises and prophecies were beginning to be fulfilled in the person of Jesus Christ. Jesus' teachings, healings, exorcisms and wonders were concrete signs of the arrival of God's kingdom and of his love, altogether evident in actions. Friends, two weeks ago we read a passage where the inhabitants of Capernaum were astonished at Jesus' teaching and amazed at the power of his word when he expelled an unclean spirit from a man in the synagogue. Last week we read about Jesus having gone to the home of Simon Peter and having healed his mother-in-law who was suffering from a fever. On hearing of this healing, people brought to Jesus all who were ill with various diseases and Jesus healed every one of them. Friends, today we read the story of Jesus healing a leper. Friends, leprosy had been prevalent since ancient times often surrounded by terrifying negative tales and stigmas of leprosy patients leading to their being shunned as outcasts. Although the number of newly detected leprosy cases has decreased globally, it still remains a disease of the poor. That is, it persists in countries where fresh water is scarce, sanitation is poor and medical care is inadequate. Friends, the disease had been also common in Israel for a long time, as early as the time of Moses. For the safety of people, God gave Moses extensive instructions to deal with the disease. The lepers could not live with their families. They had to live in caves and tents outside villages and towns or with other lepers far from the rest of the population. They could not go near other people. If normal person approached them, the lepers had to warn the person by shouting, unclean, unclean, so that the person could stay away from them. Touching the lepers, as Jesus did to one of them, according to today's gospel, was out of the question. For it is written in the book of Leviticus, if an unclean man touched anyone or spit on anyone, that person would be unclean until evening and he had to confess his sin and make a sin offering to become clean again. Friends, at the time of Jesus, there was no medical treatment for leprosy. It was universally believed that only God could heal leprosy, which is why when the king of Israel learned that the king of Syria had sent his general, Naaman or Naaman the leper, for healing, remarked, I am not a God to give life or death. The king of Aram sends this man to be healed. Eventually, the prophet Elisha heard about the request and intervened. And healed of his leprosy, Naaman became a worshipper of the God of Israel. Now, Mark writes that as Jesus continued preaching and healing throughout Galilee, a leper came to Jesus knelt in front of him and said to him, If you wish, you can make me clean. Friends, the fact of great significance is that the leper, despite being forbidden to come near anyone, approached Jesus. He willingly approached Jesus, confidently and humbly expecting that Jesus could and would heal him. He knew that Jesus had the power to save him, but he doubted whether Jesus actually would be willing to do it for him. Then the most remarkable thing happened. Jesus reached out and touched the untouchable by saying, I do will it 
be made clean. Friends, Jesus was neither repulsed by the leper's appearance, nor by his smell, nor was concerned about the purity law that forbade him to touch anyone unclean or labeled him ritually unclean. He simply saw that the leper had a need and knew that he was able to help him, so he did. Friends, Jesus' love was real and genuine, and he acted upon those feelings. No sooner had Jesus touched the leper than the leprosy left him, and he was cured. And as a result, and from that time on, the healed man would be like the others, and people would no longer avoid him. Both people and the law of God would acknowledge the healing and welcome him back to their community. Friends, after his healing of the leper, Jesus gave the healed man two specific instructions. One, he told him not to tell anyone what had happened, and two, to show himself to the priest who would offer the sacrifices Moses prescribed. Friends, did the healed man follow Jesus' instructions? No. He ignored Jesus' instructions. He went out and began to talk freely about the healing, spreading the news. As a result, Jesus could no longer enter any village or town openly, so he remained in deserted places. However, people from everywhere traveled to see him, perhaps only for the miracles. Thus, the man became a barrier to the work of Jesus. Friends, Jesus did not want the healed man to tell others because the time was not right. However, he knew that once the man showed himself to the priest, the news about the healing would spread like wildfire. Jesus wanted the people to acknowledge God's power and believe in his message that he brought as the Son of God rather than to follow him just for the miracles. Friends, as for the second instruction of fulfilling the Mosaic requirement, it seems likely that the man also failed to carry out his carry this out, although Mark does not tell us any further details. According to the law of Moses, when a leper is healed of leprosy, he would have to submit himself to a ritual cleansing and purging of sin in the temple. That is, the healed man must present himself to one of the priests in the temple to be examined by him as to whether he was free of leprosy and also to make an offering of gifts to live clean birds, cedar wood, scarlet yarn and hyssop. Then shave, bathe a couple of times and get the priest's testimony as a proof to the people that the healing is genuine before he could be allowed to mingle with people. Friends, Jesus, though he had cured the leper, still required him to be obedient to the law of the community. The man's failure to observe the Levitical regulations is evident from the fact that as the passage from the Mark chapter 2 verse 6 points out, the religious authorities began to watch Jesus every move and eventually became his deadly opponents. Friends, what is the message for us? 1. In this wonderful story, we are given a glimpse into the heart of our Lord Jesus. We see his compassion and his power. As a matter of fact, and from the beginning of time, God always has had mercy. It is he who he is. He never changes. His compassion for us never fails. Deeply moved, filled with compassion, filled with love, He reaches out to us and touches our hearts when we cry out to Him to be healed of any afflictions. Friends, God does not remain a distant spectator of our suffering, but He participates in our suffering. He empathizes and delivers us from all suffering to be healed of our illnesses and diseases, or to be made clean, or to be delivered from suffering, we must commend ourselves to His mercy. We cannot demand it as a debt, but we must humbly request it as a favor. Friends, we must come to Him humbly with our face to the ground, acknowledging our sins and being repentant of it. 
Let us be aware that each time we receive a sacrament with faith, including receiving his body and blood in the Holy Eucharist, the Lord Jesus touches and heals us and grants us his grace. 2. We may not have leprosy or skin sores or skin rashes or skin diseases that disfigure and destroy the human body that leads to forced isolation, the breakdown of family and social relationships. But we all suffer from a disease called sin, which makes us unclean and impure, isolates us from others, damages our relations with others, and keeps us distant from God and slowly eats away our soul and leads to death. Friends, today's gospel story reminds us to look at the sin in our own lives, the habits, addictions, attitudes and behaviors that cut us off from God and others and to seek Jesus who has the power to heal and liberate us from all types of sin. 3. Wherever our Lord Jesus went, he did three things. He preached the gospel, he healed the sick, and he cast out demons. Later, when he sent out his disciples to carry out the work of redemption, those whom he commissioned, the twelve and the seventy-two, were charged with the same task. They were to preach, heal, and cast out demons. He not only gave them specific tasks, but also gave them the power and authority to accomplish them. Friends, as disciples of Jesus, we too are equally charged with an anointing to preach, heal and deliver. We shall continue to reach out with our healing touch to those who feel isolated, abandoned, detached, distanced, misunderstood, rejected, unloved or uncared for even by themselves or cut off even from those they love the most. Friends, Jesus' action in today's story should motivate us to enter into the pain of those who are ill and suffering and stretch out our hand as Jesus does. 4. The healed man did not listen to Jesus and he told everybody what the Lord had done. It was just not at the right time to tell. But friends, we can talk to others about Jesus because he commands us to do so after his resurrection. Indeed, he came into this world, lived perfectly, taught his followers, healed people, cast out demons, died for sinners and came back to life so that we will also be made alive because of him. Amen. God bless you.